Because you did that act, I asked Allah Azza wa Jal to create an angel that looks like you to go and perform Hajj a story. on your behalf. So people the story <coughs> is regarding one of the scholars who lived during the time of Imam al-Sadiq and al-Kavim. His name was Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. He was not a follower of Ahlul Bayt, but he was a scholar that Muslims revere. They say he was very virtuous and knowledge, knowledgeable and pious. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, they say he went to Hajj how many times throughout his life? 50 times. 50 times he went to Hajj. But one year he didn't go. Why? He said one year, it was the time to go to Hajj. So I took 500 dinars. 500 dinars was a big amount of money, like $10,000, $15,000 today. He says, I took that money for my Hajj trip. Back then, Hajj would take a long time because you had to travel on camels and mules. So it would take one month, two months. So you need a lot of money for the trip. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak says, I took that 500 dinars and I headed, he lived in Al-Kufa. He said, I headed to the station where you rent camels. Like now we have rental cars, they would rent camels back then. So he says, on the way, he says, something caught my attention. He says, I saw a lady sitting on the side of the road. You can tell she is so sad and depressed. You can tell she is in distress. You can tell she is in pain. She is suffering from something. And there is something in her lap. I looked, I saw a dead duck. And she was just plucking the feathers of the duck. So he says, that caught my attention. I knew something was wrong with this lady. He says, I stopped and I asked her, Oh lady, what's going on? What are you doing? He said, she told me, please don't bother me. It's none of your business. I don't want to talk about it. He said, I kept on insisting and insisting. She told me, fine, because you are insisting, I'll tell you what happened. She told him, I am a descendant of Rasulullah. I am from the progeny of Rasulullah. Rasulullah is my grandfather. I am a Alwiya. Amir al muminin is my grandfather. And my husband just died a few days ago. And I am a widow now. And he left four daughters orphaned. My husband was the one that took care of us. He brought us food and shelter. After he died, no one took care of us. We are left hungry. She says to the level that it's day four now that we have not had a bite. Me or my daughters. We are starving. I came out looking for food for my daughters. I saw this dead duck. Now if you find a dead animal, are you allowed to eat it? No, because it has to be slaughtered. If it died, you can't eat it. She said that I have reached a level of starvation that eating a dead duck, which is haram, has become halal for me. Because if you're starving, you can eat whatever, even if it's haram food. So I am preparing. I am preparing this dead duck that I found on the road to go and feed it to my daughters. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak says, I was moved, shaken. I told myself, where am I? I'm spending all this money to go to Hajj on myself. And this poor Alwiya, granddaughter of Rasulullah, is suffering in this way. She does not have a meal to buy, and I'm taking 10, 15 thousand dollars, 500 dirhams with me to Hajj. Where am I from these people? He said, I felt so guilty. I felt so bad for this lady. I took the 500 dinars and I said, I will not go to Hajj this year. He had already done his wajib Hajj. He went to Hajj many times. He said, you know what? This year I'm going to be selfless. Because remember, going to Hajj, at the end of the day, it's about me. It's being selfish. He said, I will give the 500 dinars to this lady. Let her benefit from it and I won't go to Hajj. He gave her the 500 dinars. She took it and he went back home. So he didn't go to Hajj that year. He says, Hajj season finished. It's recommended when the Hujjaj come back, you go and visit them. You go and congratulate them. You tell them, Hajj mabrur, Sa'i mashkur, correct? He says, I went to one of my neighbors to visit him and congratulate him. I told him, Hajj mabrur, Sa'i mashkur. He told me, oh, Hajj mabrur to you too. Congratulations to you too. I saw you on Hajj. He said, what are you talking about? He's like, this guy definitely saw someone else. Hey, I didn't say anything, but he's confused. He says, I went, I visited another friend who came back from Hajj. I told him, Hajj Mabrur, congratulations. He told me, congratulations to you as well. I saw you in Mina. 
What's going on? I go to a third friend, he says, I saw you on Arafat. I go to a fourth friend, he says, I saw you by the Kaaba. Numerous people, everyone in my town that came back from Hajj is telling me, we saw you in Hajj. I was confused. What's going on? He said, that night I slept and I saw a dream. I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in my dream. He told me, Ya Abdullah, do not be surprised and confused. People are telling you, we saw you in Hajj. After what you did, that noble act before Hajj, because you helped a distressed person, a distressed descendant of mine. Not only was it a poor person that was starving, but it was also a descendant of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Because you did that act, I asked Allah Azza wa Jal to create an angel that looks like you to go and perform Hajj on your behalf. So people did indeed see you. It was that Malak, that angel that resembled you. And for the rest of your life and until the day of judgment, that angel every year will go to Hajj on your behalf, whether you go to Hajj or not.